How's it going? My name is Kevin Kenny. We're in the New York City Billboard offices hanging out with the gentleman of Stereophonics. How are you guys? Hello. Very good. Hello. Rockin'. Hello. Now, this is the mark of a true rock band. I'm going to say right now, you're here the day, the morning, or really the early afternoon now yeah. after a show. Yeah. You guys played Irving Plaza last night here in the city. How'd that show go? It was great. Yeah, it was yeah. good to be back in that venue. I played there for about 15 years. 15 years? In that venue. Yeah, of yeah. course. It was uh, It was good to go back there. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I have some good memories from that place. Right. For those that don't know, it's kind of an intimate venue here as far as yeah. venues go in uh, New York City. What was the crowd like? Any, was it a hot crowd? Spectacular. Or? Yeah, 15 years they've been waiting. So. They were loud. <laughs> they were loud. Yeah? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Now, you guys uh, aren't stopping at all. What's pretty cool is you're going to head across the Atlantic, back home to the UK, and yeah. you're playing a show, I think, for BBC Radio this weekend. Is it Sunday? Yeah, we're doing Hyde Park on Sunday okay. for a, a radio show there. And then uh, most of the touring will fall after Christmas. We might, we, I think we're going to try and come back here in November, though, to do some more stuff. Right here. on. Right yeah. around album release time. That'll around work out around album release yeah. time. Yeah. Maybe do some West Coast stuff as well. So, yeah. You know, I ask this question a lot, and you guys have probably been asked this. You've been a band now for, I think, what, 20 years? Yeah. Uh, so you've probably been asked this next question a, a ton. But I always like to ask the UK acts or people from overseas of the differences between American and uh, maybe European crowds. And mm -hmm. some people say there isn't a difference. Some people say there's a big difference. But I think rarely you get the experience that you guys are getting this week where you're actually going to have an American crowd last night and then a totally different crowd in the UK on Sunday. Do you see a difference at shows? Um, I see a difference in nights of the week. Really? Really, yeah. Like I a mean, weeknight crowd versus a yeah, weekend crowd? Yeah, I mean, through Thursday through to, Sat you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, usually pretty raucous. Yeah. Sunday, they start mellowing out a bit. Monday, you should just never do a show on a Monday. <laughs> yeah. And, Everyone's uh, sleeping on Monday. Yeah, Monday's a waste of time. So I think cities are similar. You know, London, New York, LA, very kind of similar. But I, I think, um, yeah, you have to kind of give them what they want in the major cities, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to start with this song that I'm absolutely in love with, guys. I saw you perform it le yesterday on the Today Show, Caught by the Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me about this song, because this isn't just a good song. This is an amazing song. Yesterday, I had it up on, um, I was watching on my computer, so I had it up on like a tab in the background, you know, trying oh, to do yeah. my work. I had to stop what I was doing just to watch your performance. I was so just enamored by this song. It was the first time I was hearing it, actually. Nice. Uh, and it's tough to do on a, on a morning talk show, right? Kind of bring bring the rock. Yeah. But you guys certainly did. <laughs> well, it was, it was Jamie's jacket. <laughs> yeah, you know. really well, was. It was, that added a little bit there, but we were up at five in the morning and we, we got onto that stage at six and we were smashing it. Every time we played that song, we smashed it. We did it about three times and then we did it live and we had uh, Justin Long introducing us. He had some lovely words to say and we started playing and we knew we had it. Yeah. We knew we had it. You could feel it? You knew yeah. it. No, f 15 seconds in and you knew you had it. We, yeah. were, we, were we had to have it because it was live. So yeah. if we'd stopped, it would have been a disaster. Well, how many times have you actually performed that song live? Because that's a fairly new song. And TV, really hasn't never no, in. Not on generally TV. only three times, I think. Wow. So that was really one of the first times ever for a television show, right? Ever on TV, that's the first time yeah. on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What can you tell us about what went into uh, writing that song? Uh, I, I wrote the song on, on a piano. Um, and the lyric was something I'd been working on for a while. It, it was a lot of different lines and words and stuff. And it was a very optimistic kind of song um, about celebrating small things the simple things in life like memories when i used to climb up onto my roof at my parents house and lie out on the roof and you know watching planes and stuff like that just kind of images that kind of came back the world is filled with a lot of noise these days a lot of bad mm -hmm. news and uh, and then my daughter came home from school and there was one line i had missing it was like a space in this song i couldn't find the the finished kind of line in this thing and she came home and she said you know i was in the school today and you remember you know, I, and I, I was running around the yard and it was really windy. And she said, do you remember when you got caught by the wind? And she put her coat out like that and you run against the wind and the wind holds you back. And I just thought oh, that that's the line. So I, I, I filled it in and then I tried to sing it, hope it would work and it worked. Hopefully so she gets a writing credit on this. So right? she's going to come back when she's about 26. <laughs> Looking and for royalties. Uh, look for royalties and, <laughs> you know, the, the half of the house and stuff like right, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can, yeah, you can erase that a bit. <laughs> now, in addition to the shows, and you're on the Today Show, and you got the concerts coming up this weekend, uh, you also dropped a music video for Caught by the Wind. Um, we did. This yeah. week. What can you tell us about shooting that and any stories of that? Well, we recorded the All in One Night video, which was the first single, um, which was kind of a narrative story song. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, that's another yeah, song. Yeah, but, but, that, but that's right the, the, we finished filming that video about 8 o'clock, and there was about two hours left, so we put a different background up and changed our jackets and said, let's make the most of this money, and we shot another video. You uh, shot that the two same videos night? in a day, yeah, yeah. Be between yeah. ten and twelve, yeah. and then we got on a van and 
drank some beer and went in a car for about eight hours home. Wow. You would really never know watching these videos back to back. They're very different videos. Uh, the new one's more performance based, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, but while we're on the topic, let's talk about the All in One Night video. Mm. That's an incredible song, by the way. It really flexes your guys' talents as storytellers. It's a very immersive song. You know, it almost feels like it or sounds like it feels, right? You listen to that and you're there in the middle of the night yeah. with those characters in the narrative. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of those songs where exactly as you say, really, if you can write some words and if you can get the background of the music to kind of sound like how the words are, you know, how they, what they tell you the story, then people get sucked into that a lot more, you know? It was a very narrative story over the course of one night and each verse is a different time and the two characters develop, uh, you know, a massive change in their life over the course of that one evening. And I didn't really know if the song was making sense to anybody else and uh, the, the the boys here did. Because we're not really on it much as a band. It's a synthetic drum kit, synthetic synthesizers, and it's not really a rock and roll song, but it was, it was a cool sound and... Um, it just sucks you in. It was one of them kind of atmosphere songs, you know. Is that at all semi-autobiographical? It's a pretty epic story. Can you kind of take us through it for anyone watching right now that hasn't heard the song? Uh, well, it's a song that, you know, like it, each verse tells you it's one o'clock in the morning, then it's two o'clock in the morning, and each each verse tells you a different section of how the story goes. I wrote about three or four versions of it until I came across this version. It was inspired by a, a German movie actually called Victoria, um, where these people go to a nightclub and then they come out of the club and then the night really evolves over a slow course. It's like a one-shot movie. And uh, the, the, the story just unfolds and you didn't expect where it's going sort of thing. So it's not really autobiographical, but there's parts of the story which I've experienced and you know gone through. Um, but I kind of like those twists and turns in stories like that, especially yeah. in songs. You know, you don't get it much. I've done it in a few songs in the earlier albums. So... They kind of come out sometimes like that. I was trapped in a hotel room in Shanghai. Something had to happen, actually. Jet, yeah. jet lag can do that to you. You wrote that in Shanghai? I wrote the, the, the principle of the idea, yeah, the time wow. thing, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, this is all building up to the album, of course. Is it uh, available for pre-order right now, do we know? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you're watching right now at home and you want to get your hands on yeah. it earlier, or at least put it, uh, yeah. put it away, you can do so right now. You can. Um, now, this is your 10th studio album. And I want to talk about the title, Scream Above the Sounds. Yeah. Now, is that, you just talked about how noisy our world well, is. Is that commentary on that? It kind of is. It, that was a line in All in One Night. And the album title is generally the last thing that comes to mind for when you're making a record. Um, apart from Graffiti on the Train, which was the whole concept of the record. So that came first and then the songs came after. But generally, it's the last thing that happens. And I liked that line. And it came out one day. And then when I try to put into context about the rest of the record, which does comment a lot on kind of trying to get through a lot of the crap that's in the world and people wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is check their phone, it's usually bad news, they go to bed and it's bad news, it's bad news, bad news. And it's about celebrating the good stuff in life and there's, there's journeys through all the songs but they generally come out of a hopeful ending. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess Scream Above the Sounds is kind of about that really, it's kind of shut above the noise that's going on in life and you know, we've experienced all these things, you know, like we played the Bat Clan in Paris, we played Manchester Arena. All the songs are written before these kinds of things, but obviously the experiences are in the world every day. So yeah, I guess that does seep through when you write in. And for a while, part of me was going to try to make changes in my life to avoid going to places. But then I realized when I looked at the writing, I was actually trying to celebrate the good stuff as opposed to all the crap that's going on. So I right. guess that's a commentary on it. Yeah. yeah. So 20 years as a band. I have that right? 20 yeah. years? I think this is what the debut album came out in 1997. Is that true? It is true. It's so official. I'd love to just go down the line here and just individually, what do you attribute that longevity to? Because it's really remarkable. I think it's your jackets. Yeah. <laughs> My my answer is the jackets. Yeah, the jackets. Yeah, the jackets. All right, yeah. let's leave it at yeah. that. Yeah. Leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> yeah, talents and good looks. That's what it's about. Anyone else? I think we um, we always you know like wanted to be the best band we could possibly be. You know, like mm -hmm. playing live, we wanted to be you know like just like it was on the record, if mm -hmm. not you know like better. Yeah. Um, and we wanted the albums to stand the test of time, really. So you know, like we didn't want to be one hit wonders. We wanted to write. And like consistently good music and push ourselves forward, keep right. on challenging those ourselves. So. Yeah. You know, when you're uh, little kids and you want to grow up and be rock stars, I'm sure you envision you make these grand plans for your debut album, maybe your second album, maybe even your third album. But you guys are entering your 10th studio album. So I'm just curious, you could have never dreamt this far. It's not even possible. No. How do you approach it? 
Uh, well, you, you don't really think of it in, in the scale of that. I mean, when you make your first record, you're just happy that you've got an opportunity to put songs out into the world. So, you, but you still want to make songs that last the test of time. And that's the only, uh, to be honest, that's the only agenda I've ever had as a songwriter is that I hope people will relate to these songs in 20 years time or 30 years time. Um, I never really wanted to be flavor of the month. I never really wanted to be a flash in the pan or jump on a bandwagon. I just, if I'm going through an experience in life or I experience somebody else's experience in life and I put into music through the way that I do stuff and they can relate back to it, that's kind of the, the whole process of what it is. So I don't sit down thinking, oh my God, how am I going to write this 10th album in the 20th year? It's just what I go to work every day to do. and. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, people are still coming to the shows and listening yeah, to the they music. they certainly so are. I mean, that's the best part about it, really. I, th I still think it's down to Jamie's jackets. But <laughs> 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 it's all the jackets, keeping the jackets new. How many jackets do you have, Jamie? I've, uh, I've got three racks of jackets. You have three racks uh, of jackets? My wife has one rack. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. So we're the jack in that relationship, it sounds that's, like. That's, the wha that's where we're at. <laughs> <All right. laughs> How big is your wardrobe? <laughs> it's a room. It's a whole room. A room. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. The jacket, jacket room. He's got the biggest jacket room. He's got the biggest wardrobe and the biggest garden. How many yeah. shoes? Come on, shoes. I can't comment. No. I'm not no going comment there. We only discussed Do you have jackets. any cool shoes on right now? No, no this, this is... No, this no. is very plain for they you. They take yeah. away from the jacket. No, no, this accentuates the jacket. Yeah, yeah. no, that's saying. If you had flashy shoes No, but if you had... If you if you had your... Got flashy shoes. If you had your spiky ones... We got it all. He's got them. Spikes, we got it all. Yes. Today is this. This is the right vibe for today. Nice. Yeah. Shoot. It's a good vibe. Perfect outfit for today. I have. Taking taking second stage. To <laughs> We've all got good shoes to be honest. There's a bit of velvet going on today. You might notice. Yeah. Bit of trailer. Ooh. Yeah. Cord. We've got cord. Bit of cord. corduroy. You know. Bit of cord. Tattoos. Nice. We've got everything. We've got here. it all. Going. This has quickly all. turned into a fashion good, show. Yeah. That's, that's it. Nice. We Something have it for everybody. Cater for everyone here. <laughs> well, guys, so thank you so much for stopping by our offices here in New York. The album is out everywhere October 27th. It's available for pre-order right now, so go get your hands on it. The music we've heard so far sounds excellent. And again, thank you for stopping by, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.